welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohinu, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohinu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we enter. <coughs> Excuse me. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, Elohim, king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. <coughs> Today's read is a little bit of a long one. Exodus 13, verse 17 through chapter 17, verse 16. And when Pharaoh let the people go, Elohim did not lead them by way of the land, <coughs> by way of the land of Philistines. Although that was near, for Elohim said, Lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. But Elohim led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt equipped for battle. Moses took <coughs> the bones of Joseph with him. For Joseph had made the sons of Israel solemnly swear, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from with you from here. And they moved on to Sukkot. And encamped at Ethan on the edge of the wilderness. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them that they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. And the, pil the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from them before the people. <clears throat> then Yahweh said to Moses, Tell all the people of Israel to turn back and camp in front of Pi Hahiroth, between Migdol and the sea, in front of Baza Baal Zephon. Yeah. You shall encamp facing it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say that of the people of Israel, They are wandering in the land. The wilderness has shut them in, <clears throat> and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, and the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, What is this that we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him. He took 600 chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And Yahweh said, And Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army overtook them and camped at the sea by Pai Hahiroth in front of Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly, and the people of Israel cried out to Yahweh. They said to Moses, It is because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness. What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. Yahweh will fight for you, and you have only... You have only to be silent. Yahweh said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? 
Tell the people of Israel to go forward, lift up your staff, and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, so that they shall go in after them. And I will give glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen, and the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh. When I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and all his horsemen. Then the angel of Elohim, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And a pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the hosts of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud and a darkness, and it lit up the night, without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahweh drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground. The waters began the wall <coughs> began being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And all the morning watch Yahweh in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for Yahweh fights for them against the Egyptians. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the seas, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course. When the morning appeared, and all the Egyptians fled into it. Yahweh threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returning and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the hosts of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus Yahweh saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power of Yah that Yahweh used against the Egyptians, so the people feared Yahweh, and they believed in Yahweh and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to Yahweh, saying, I will sing to Yahweh, for he has triumphant, triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider has thrown into the sea. Yahweh is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my Yahweh. My Elohim, and I will praise him. My father Elohim, and I will exalt him. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Yahweh, glory and power. Your right hand, O Yahweh, shatters the enemy. In the right greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury, it consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters pile up, the floods stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the sea, in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide my spoil, I'll, my desire shall have its fill of them. <clears throat> Sorry. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Yahweh, among gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your hands, the earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The people have heard, they trembled. Pangs have seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Now all the chiefs of Edom dismayed, trembling seizes the leaders of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them because of the greatness of your arm. They are still as a stone. Till your people, O Yahweh, pass by. Till the people pass by whom you have purchased. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Yahweh, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, 
which your hands have established, Yahweh will reign forever and ever. For when the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, Yahweh brought them, brought back the waters of the sea upon them, but the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing, and Miriam sang to them, Sing to Yahweh, for his triumph gloriously. The horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water when they came to Marah. They could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. Therefore it was named Marah. And the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to Yahweh, and, Yah and Yahweh showed him a log. And he threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There Yahweh made for them a statute and a, a statute and a rule. And there he tested them, saying, If you will diligently listen to the voice of Yahweh your Elohim, and do that which is right in his eyes, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am Yahweh your healer. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. They set out from Elim, and all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and, si and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month, after they had departed from the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The people of Israel said to them, What would that we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt? When we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the, to the full, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill us this whole assembly with hunger. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, I am about to rain bread from heaven for you and for the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. And on the sixth day when they prepared what they bring in, it will be as twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was Yahweh who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of Yahweh, because he has heard your grumbling against Yahweh. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When Yahweh gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to, f to the full, because Yahweh has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him. What are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against Yahweh. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before Yahweh. For he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahweh appeared in a cloud. And Yahweh said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am Yahweh your Elohim. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is this? But they did not know what it was, and Moses said to them, It is the bread that Yahweh has given you to eat. This is what Yahweh has commanded. Gather it, gather of it, each of you as much as he can eat. You shall each take an omer. According to the number of persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. And when they measured it, Within Omar, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, Let's not, 
Let no one leave any of it over till morning. But they did not listen to Moses. Some left part of it till morning, and, up, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. By morning, morning by morning, they gathered each as much as he could eat. But when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omars each. And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, This is what Yahweh commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to Yahweh. Bake what you will bake, and boil what you will boil, and all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they laid it aside till the morning, and Moses commanded them. And it did not stink, and there was no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahweh. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. And Yahweh said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, Yahweh has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives, gives you bread for two days remaining. Remain each of you in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now the house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seeds, white. The taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, this is what Yahweh has commanded. Let an omer of it be kept through your generations. So that they may see the bread of which I fed you in the wilderness. And when I brought you out of the land of Egypt, and Moses said to Aaron, Take a jar, and put an omar of manna in it, and place it before Yahweh to be kept throughout your generations, as Yahweh commanded Moses. So Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. The people of Israel ate the manna forty years till they came to the habitable land. They ate the manna till they came to the border of the land of Canaan. And Omar is the tenth part of an ephah. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of Yahweh, and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink, therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test Yahweh? But the people thirst there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why do you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to Yahweh, <coughs> What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And Yahweh said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff which, with which you struck the Nile and go. Behold, I will stand before you there, on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it. The people of Israel drank, and Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the name of the place Massa in Meribah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested Yahweh by saying, Is Yahweh among us or not? Then Amalek came and fought with Israel at Rephidim. So Moses said to Joshua, Choose for us men, and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of Elohim in my hand. So Joshua did, as Moses told him, and fought with Amalek. While Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. Whenever Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed, and whenever he lowered his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses, <coughs> Moses' hands grew weary, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. While Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. So his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with the sword. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Write this as a memorial in a book and recite it on the ears of Joshua, that it will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under the heavens. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it, Yahweh is my banner, saying, A hand on saying a hand on the throne of Yahweh. Yahweh will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. <coughs> Man,
Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, king of the universe. She gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in her midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah of Brukata, Adonai Elohim, Malak alone. As in a tal anu tredi met by she alone na ta bete can you bruka ta donai na tina tara. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to gross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord, please, Lord our God, or Adonai Elohim, you. Sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name. And study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Bless you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Bless you, Adonai, Elohim, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Bless you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence and let you may be kind to you. May, may Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is Judges 4, 4 through 5. 31. <clears throat> now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lepadoth, was judging Israel at that time. She was used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ra Brahma and Bethel, in the hill country of Ephraim. And the people of Israel came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, the son of Abinam, from Kadesh Naphtali, and said to him, Has not Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, commanded you, Go gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking ten thousand people from the taking ten thousand people of Naphtali and the people of Zebulun, and I'll draw out Sisera, the general of Jamin's army, to meet you there by the river Kishon with his chariots and his troops. And I'll give him into your hand. Brock said to her, If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you nevertheless. The road on which you are going will not lead to your glory. For Yahweh will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah rose and went with Brock to Kadesh. And Brock called out Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh. And ten thousand men went up at his heels. And Deborah went up with him. <coughs> now Heber the Kenite had separated from the Kenites the descendants of Habab, the father-in-law of Moses, and had pitched his tent as far away from the, as far away as Oak in Zananim, which is near Kadesh. When Sisera was told that Barak the son of Abinamab, Abinoam, <laughs> had gone up to Mount Tabor, Cicero called out all his chariots, 900 chariots of iron, and all the men who were with him, from Horosheth Hagoyim, the river Kishon. And Deborah said to Barak, Up, for this is the day in which Yahuwah has given Cicero into your hand. Does not Yahuwah go out before you? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him, and Yahweh routed Sisera and all his chariots and all his army before Barak by the edge of the sword. And Sisera got down from his chariot and fled away on foot, and Barak pursued the chariots and the army of Horosheth Hogoyim, and all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword. Not a man was left. But Sisera fled away on foot to the tent of Jael. The wife of Heber the Kenite. <coughs> For there was a peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. And Jael came out to meet Sisera and said to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me. Do not be afraid. She so he stepped aside to her, ended its tent, and she was covering him with a rug. 
And he said to her, Please give me a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. So she opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. And he said to her, Stand at the opening of the tent, and if any man asks you, Is there anyone here? Say no. But Jill and the wife of Heber took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand, and she soft, she went softly into him and drove the peg into his temple until he went down into the ground. While he was lying fast asleep from weariness, so he died. And behold, Barak was pur pursuing Sisera. Jayla went out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I'll show you the man of whom you are seeking. So he went into her tent, and lay, and there lay Sisera dead, with the tent peg in his temple. So on that day Elohim subdued Jabin the king of Canaan before the people of Israel. And the hand of the people of Israel pressed harder and harder against Jabin the king of Canaan until they destroyed Jabin king of Canaan. They sang Deborah, Deborah and Barak the son of Benoam on that day. That the leaders took the lead in Israel. That the people offered themselves willingly. Bless Yahweh. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princess, to Yahweh I will sing. I will make melody to Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. Lord, when you went out from Seir, when you marched from the region of Edom, the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped. Yes, the clouds dropped the water. The mountains quaked before Yahweh, even Sinai before Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel. <coughs> In the days of Shemgar, son of Anath, in the days of jail, the highways were abandoned and travelers kept to the byways. The villagers ceased in Israel. They ceased to be until I arose. I, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel. And when new gods were chosen, then war was in the gates. Was shield or spear to be seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart goes out to the commanders of Israel who offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless Yahweh. Tell of it, you who ride on white donkeys, you who sat on rich carpets, and you who walk by the way. To the sound of musicians at the watering places, there they repeat the righteous triumphs of Yahweh, the righteous triumphs of his villagers in Israel. Then down to the gates march the people of Yahweh, awake, awake, Deborah, king, oops, awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, break out in song. Arise, Brock, lead away your captives, O son of Abenoam. Then down marched the remnant of his noble. Of the noble. The people of Yahweh marched down for me against the mighty. For from Ephraim their foot they marched. No, root. From Ephraim their root they marched down into the valley, following you, Benjamin, which are kinsmen. From Mishkar, marched down to commanders, and from Zebulun, those who bear the lieutenant's staff, the princess of Ishikar, came with Deborah. And Ishikar, faithful to Barak, into the valley they rushed at his heels, among the clans of Rumen. There they were great searchings of the heart. Why did you sit among the sheepfolds to hear the whistling for the flocks. Among the clans of Rumen there were great searchings of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan, and Dan, why did he stay with the ships? Asher sat still at the coast of the sea, staying by his landings. Zebulun is a people who risked their lives to the death, Naphtali too, on the heights of the field. The kings came, they fought, then fought the kings of Canaan and Tanakh by the waters of Megadu. They got no spoil of silver from heaven, the stars fought from their courses, they fought against Sisera. The torrent Kishon swept them away, an ancient torrent, the torrent Kishon, march on, my soul, with might. The loud beat of horses' hoofs with galloping, galloping of his steeds. Curse Marah, says the angel of Yahweh. Curse its inhabitants thoroughly, because they did not come to the help of Yahweh, the help of Yahweh against the mighty. 
Most blessed of women be Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. Of twin dwelling women most blessed. He asked her for water and she gave him milk. She brought him curds and a noble bowl. She sent her hand to the tent peg and her right hand to the workman's mallet. She struck Sisera and she crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple. Between her feet he sank, he fell, he lay still. Between her feet he sank, he fell. Where he sank, there he fell dead. Out of the window she peered, the mother of Sisera wailed through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the hoofbeats of his chariots? His wisest princesses answer. Indeed, she answers herself. Have they not found the divided and divided the spoil a womb or two for every man? Spoil the dyed material for Sisera. Spoil the dyed material embroidered. Two pieces of dyed work embroidered for the neck as spoil. So may all your enemies perish, O Yahuwah. But your friends be like the sun as he rises in his might. And the land had rest for forty years. <laughs> Blessed art thou, Adonai Elihinu, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver the Torah, Bruka ta Adonai Elihinu, Malach Alom. Asanatan Alu Toredi Met Baishi Alomna. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say your blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai, Elohim, you king of the universe, who chose... Who has sanctified us with his commandments, committed us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and your offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and serve your Torah for, faith, for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohim, you king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Brook, uh, <laughs> May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence soon and you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Well, could have been a little better. Uh, today's read is Matthew 5, 1 through 48. See the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Elohim. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of Elohim. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if this salt has lost its taste, how, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that you, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until it is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, 
Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it is said of, to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother, you will be liable will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to counsel. And whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and, there's, and there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother. And then come and offer your, offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your you, accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard. <coughs> Excuse me. And you will be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery, but I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery within his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away, for it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was said also, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whoever, that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either in heaven, for it is the throne of Elohim, or by the earth, for it is the footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let, you s let what you say simply be yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you, and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. You have heard that it was said. You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who art in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Elohim, Malak Alom. Hello all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, and committed us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed you, Adonai. Elohim, you king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai bestow 
Oops. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is John 6, 22 through 40. On the next day, the crowd that remained on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there, and that Yeshua had not entered the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Other boats from Tiberias came near to near the place where they had been where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that Yeshua was not there, nor his disciples, they themselves got in their boats and went to Capernaum seeking Yeshua. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Yeshua answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you, for on him Elohim the Father has sent, set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to be doing the works of Elohim? Yeshua answered them, This is the work of Elohim, that you believe in him who he has sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you do, that we may see and believe you? What works do you perform? Our fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Yeshua then said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of Elohim is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Yeshua said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I say to you, that you must, oops, that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me. But raise it up on the last day, for this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him should have eternal life, and I will raise Him up on the last day. Blessed art thou, Donai Elohinu, King of the Universe, who gave us the Torah of Truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Donai Giver the Torah, Bukhata Donai Elohinu, Malach Alom. As for Natal Lenu, Tredi, Met Baishi, Elum, Natabat, the Kenyu, Brukata, Donai, Natina Tara. Hello, all, and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I must say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord. Our God, or Adonai Elohinu, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us with His commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohinu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people. Israel, may we in your offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai Elohinu, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. <coughs> Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to then you may be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 13. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and that all passed through the sea, <clears throat> and all were baptized in the Moses in the cloud and in, in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Hamashiach. Nevertheless, with most of them Elohim was not pleased, for they were over, overthrown in the wilderness. <clears throat> now these things took place as an example for us, that we might not 
desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it was written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put... <coughs> excuse me. We must not put Hamashiach up to the test, as some of them did, and were destroyed by serpents. Nor grumble, as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example. But they were written down for our instruction. On whom the, the end of the age has come, therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No, tem <coughs> no temptation was overtaken has overtaken you that is not common to man. Elohim is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. <clears throat> Blessed art thou, Adonai, the king of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and said everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai, Elohim, Malak Alom, Asher Natalu, Nu, Tereti, Met, Vaishi, Elom, Natabet, Kenyu, Brukata Adonai, Natina Torah. Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before I get started, I'm going to say a blessing. Blessed art thou, Adonai Elohim, you King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai Elohim, you sing the words of your Torah in our mouths, and in the mouths of all your people, Israel, may we in your offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, the new king of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai, bless Oops. May Adonai make his presence here and lend you may be kind to you. May Adonai bless favor on you and grant you peace. Today's read is, we got two of them. 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 15 and Revelations 15, 1 through 4. With our first read being 2 Corinthians 8, 1 through 15. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of Elohim that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in several tests of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And it's not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then to the will of Elohim to us. According, we urge Titus that as he started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in all our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this is not a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that you love also, your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that, by, so that you by his poverty might become rich. And in this matter I give my judgment, for this benefits you who a year ago started not only to do this work, but also to desire to do it. So now finish doing it as well, so that your readiness in desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. For I do not mean that others should be ease and you burden but that, as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should be, should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that they may be, f that there may be fairness, as it is written: Whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Revelation fifteen one through four. 
Then I saw another sign in heaven, great and amazing, seven angels with seven plagues, which are the last, for with them the wrath of Elohim is finished. And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire, and also those who had conquered the beast and its image and a number of its name, standing beside the sea of glass with harps of Elohim in their hands. And they sung the song of Moses, the servant of Elohim, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord Elohim the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will fear? Who will not fear, O Lord? And glorify your name. For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. <laughs> Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth instead of everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah, Brukata Adonai Eloheinu, Malak Alom. As Natan Lanu, Tredi Met Baishi Alom, Natabetikenu, Brukata Adonai, Tina Torah. 